we've seen some great perspectives today from from you know from Jonathan and Edward and my perspective is a little different I'm not a certifier I'm not anyone who's implementing the standard as a consultant I'm ground level I'm the operator of the data center or in my case more specifically uh, in my role I'm the interface between auditors and the organization that I work for, which is Iron Mountain Data Centers. There's a lot of standards out there that are applicable to data center or appropriate for data centers. Um, and in this list, you'll kind of see some of these do cross over a bit, um, but there are regularly regulatory compliance standards, frameworks, risk management methodologies that give breadth and depth. However, few are explicitly prescriptive about technical details such as you know, TIA 942 brings to the table. Most standards aim to mitigate overall risk at a high level or demonstrate that a set of requirements are simply in place or um, evaluating the effectiveness of a control rather than being technical. So some of the things that we'll see in the industry, especially in co-location, which is the world that I come from, where you know, it's not a proprietary data center, it's actually, you know, for example, the co-location data center would have a whole host of different providers within it in their own space. So everyone from the banking industry to healthcare to payment card processors and you know gaming providers, streaming services, they're all in, in these co-location data centers. So you'll see regulatory and information security uh, assurance standards um, like ISAE 3402 associated with SOC, you know, PCI DSS for payment card industry, uh, SSA 18, which is the kind of Americanized North American version of that access station report. Um, and another regulatory one is HIPAA for the US around regulatory compliance. And then also management systems. So um, Jonathan and Edward both touched on energy efficiency as part of the TIA uh, standard. Um, ISO 50001 is all about energy management. Uh, 14001 about environmental management. 22301 for uh, business continuity and resiliency. And ISO 45001 for health and safety. So those management systems aim to give a holistic approach to how you take care of those respective disciplines in your environment. And, you know, of course, with ours, it's data centers. And then there's best practices and frameworks, which sometimes, you know, cross back over to regulatory, like ISO 27000, that whole series, whether it's 27001 as the certification or the risk management framework of 27005. Um, NIST has a whole host of, of uh risk management frameworks and best practices for the United States, um, COBIT as a risk framework or IT best practice. And then of course, ITIL, which a lot of us have seen in the IT service management world. And where all these things bring different aspects to the table of how you can certify your data center or manage risk in a data center, none of them are very specific in the way that they talk to technical specifications. So one may ask the question, you know, why is that important to data center customers or folks who rely on data center availability um, because as Jonathan and Edward Bolt kind of explained whether you have customers relying on your uptime or someone else relying on you being you know up all the time um, going beyond a traditional audit or assessment I think in in my world and as I see the industry developing now is critical incorporating something like TIA 942 as a technical standard and audit can give a lot of positive reassurance behind um, an existing management system or framework because it speaks to the technical details um, of managing risk at the data center operator level. And, and for me as a, an auditor, an information systems auditor and information security manager perspective, it demonstrates to me when I see other folks having it that risk management aspects have been evaluated, are in place more so at a technical level. So you may have an overarching energy management system or you may have an overarching information security management system that takes maintenance and, and cabling and other things into consideration, you know, fire and life safety. But the TIA 942 standard really drills down to that technical perspective, making sure that things are in line from a holistic risk management uh, lens. And, and that gives a lot of reassurance to customers. And then the, you know, a bit, again, testing specific items that are, are assessed as in place, like SOC or um, ISO would, these are expanded upon with, uh, with reviews of how systems actually work within the TA 942 standard and through the audit process. And that in-depth auditing and that in-depth assessment really carries a lot of weight with uh, co-location customers. I can assess that, you know, test that myself. Right now, I'm actually going through an assessment with, with uh, one of our customers in a few locations. And 
you know, it's important to our customers and, and everyone downstream knowing that availability uh, integrity of the services there. And then of course, lastly, for this slide, rating level outcomes as described uh, earlier, Edward really touched on these uh, great. Um, the rating level outcomes are easily communicated and understood. And that's what's really important for, for me because a lot of folks will ask questions about the rating and, and what rating one, rating two, et cetera means. And uh, when we can describe that and then also describe how the technical standard is important to them, um, it makes the job a lot easier. So it's something that we're, we're certainly considering and looking into. And I think co-location as a whole, it really needs something like TA 942 because we see a lot of the basic standards and the ISO frameworks, but it doesn't really go to the technical prowess that TIA brings to the table. And a lot of it's really about transparency. So when we're looking at things from a technical perspective, architecture, risk, uh, fire safety, physical security, site location, electrical, mechanical, and telecommunications being assessed is what's great about this. And I, I, I don't want to repeat too much of what Edward said earlier, but that really carries a lot of weight in a co-location environment with my customers. When we talk to them about standards, the standards we're talking about are great, high level, and giving uh, an overview of what we do. But being able to take that technical perspective and explain it to the customer and explain this is why we, get, we, we are certified and this is why we went through the assessment and spent the time um, it is really valuable. So again, the rating system, when we communicate this to customers, it's something that demonstrates resiliency that's not shown in other audit frameworks and assessments. And for an operator, it, it's a common question, if not one of the most common questions that I get about being concurrently maintainable, you know, a rating three, or fault tolerant, which is something that we're seeing more and more. Uh, so there's not, you know, fault tolerant is, it's not ubiquitous, it's not like concurrently maintainable. Um, there aren't as many sites that are able to say they're fault tolerant and have an audit and an assessment backing that. But we're starting to see that question come up and, and having the standard being able to report and, you know, show that reliability is really valuable again. So with that said, you know, there are limited ways to demonstrate this effectively. So having that third party TIA 942 standard in place, having it verified by an assessment body, it really enables organizations to report on their reliability, unlike just saying, oh, we have ISO 27001 in place, so you can ensure that we have backups and, you know, we're doing what we say we're doing, even if a third party is looking at it, it's still not looking at the technical aspect of it, right? They're not looking at the technical diagrams, the drawings, the details. They're looking at if a management system is in place. Now, certainly you can drill down your systems to be that in depth, but uh, to be brutally honest, a lot of assessment bodies that are doing data center verification of 27001 and the ISO standards, you know, those folks um, are, are auditors uh, by trade looking at the ISO frameworks in, in accordance with the ISO auditing guidelines. TIA 942 is so much different and valuable in the fact you know, for me as an operator to say that the technical details have been, you know, taken care of. Uh, so with that said, you know, it's another great value proposition and rating three has been table stakes for years now. So a lot of large multinationals are asking the questions about rating three, but fault tolerance certainly on the table for the future. And one of the things I want to touch on just lastly with this is what are the benefits for data center operators? So capturing safety, business continuity, security, and energy best practices as parts of the TIA 942 standard are great, mainly because you could have a specific uh, management system or framework implemented like business continuity for 22301, health and safety under ISO 45001, which is you know, formerly known as uh, the British standard uh, 18001, or energy management. And those are great, they're solely focused on those disciplines, but what's great and evolving about TIA 942 is that it is that all-encompassing kind of framework and standard like, uh, like Edward was mentioning, where it includes key aspects of those categories specific to how data centers operate. ISO standards are agnostic. It doesn't care what industry you're in. They're meant to be globally uh, applicable and, and agnostic of whatever industry or sector that you're in. And you can certainly tailor it but TIA 942 is carved out specifically for the things that operators in the data center space care about. 
So this can set a basis. So let's say you don't have ISO 50001 or ISO 22301. Having TIA 942 as an interest point could set a basis for organized, uh, organizations seeking certification or get them more interested in the things that their customers are asking about and caring about. And then lastly, um, no, certainly not in as much detail as Jonathan hit on earlier, but the telecommunications cabling and topology specifications within the standard are really great for showing attention to detail, best practices, and competence of adequate telecommunications topology and cabling implementation, which is critical and key for availability in the data center environment. Um, so this empowers us to show our customers uh, that we're reducing risk by ensuring that entrance rooms, computer rooms, racks, main distribution areas, cable trays, all these things are employing the best practices that should be in place in order to mitigate risk in the data center environment.